Every actor who has played the role of the Joker has had this role haunt them after filming. First, we're going to talk about Jack Nicholson. So he played the role right before Heath Ledger. And when Heath Ledger passed away, they interviewed him and this is what he had to say. Jack, right. any comments on Heath Ledger's death? About what? Heath Ledger, the actor, he died tonight. Any comments? New York. Overdose. 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 He died in New York. Oh, yeah. right. so just found him dead yeah. a couple hours ago. I warned him. <laughs> listen, Jack. <laughs> Now, part of me thinks that, like, in this context, he was referring to substance abuse, but a lot of people say that, like, it's about the Joker. This is what the theory stems from, that everyone who has played the Joker has been cursed and the Joker, like, hasn't left them. Like, once you play the Joker, the Joker will always be a part of you. Jack Nicholson had already done The Shining, so he had experience with these kind of intense types of characters. He mentioned in an interview that ever since his childhood, he had always felt a connection with the Joker and he knew that one day he was going to play him. And so like, if we're gonna go with the theory, it's like the Joker was almost seeking him out. My cat is playing with his volleyball right now, but if you're hearing like jingling, that's what it is. So when Jack Nicholson found out that Heath Ledger was then going to be taking over the role as the live action Joker years later, they asked him, they said, what did you think about another actor getting to play this role? And he said, I am furious. It's almost like he's jealous that like Heath Ledger now gets to become this character. I mean, that is what it is. But like, you know, people have really worded it acting like Jack Nicholson believes he is the Joker. You know what I mean? Also comment down below, who is your favorite live action Joker? Now we're gonna talk about Heath Ledger. And as I go through these like actors and their experiences, of course, I mean, absolutely no disrespect. I'm just talking about like a theory that's popular on the internet. My one experience with Heath um, on the film was our scene together in the hospital bed, which is really my only scene with him. And it was, um, I was in the hospital bed that day and I thought, well, I don't really have any lines. What am I gonna do? And I had no idea what was gonna happen. And so I got in the bed and they were lighting and Chris was walking around and doing things. And then Heath came around and Heath was always in character. So he would come around and you know be talking to himself in the corner like this. And then he would come up, I was laying there and I was watching him the whole time. And he came up and would walk around me like this. And I would watch him, and I would watch him. He'd walk around the hospital bed like this. I'd watch him. Didn't say anything for maybe an hour. He would walk around, <laughs> and then we'd watch him, and then he'd start saying his lines. And I would watch him, boom, watch him come around the bed like this. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, my hand <clears throat> would go up like this, and he cap caught my hand. So we just went through this organic process of developing this scene, which was really nothing. We never said a word to each other. Wow. And we walked out to our back to our trailers and Heath was here and I was walking and he puts his hand on my shoulder and he goes, that's what acting's all about. So the Joker was the last character that Heath Ledger played before he passed away. And people will tell you that this was the best portrayal of the Joker they've ever seen. And I personally agree. However, I love Mark Hamill as the voice actor. He's probably my favorite Joker if we're including voice actors, but that's like a whole other conversation. Also the versions of the Joker that I'm going to be speaking about in this video are ones that had like notable experiences or like weird things attached with them playing the role. I understand there are many actors who have played the Joker. We're just talking about the ones who have the curse. Now Heath Ledger's death was ruled as an accident, but a lot of people believe that the Joker is what really got to him. When he was preparing for the role, he locked himself in a hotel room for an entire month and he had a notebook that he would keep that he called the Joker Journal. He only slept for two hours a night, spending the rest of his time writing in the journal. And like really put that into perspective. Think about what you were doing last month and think about if like today was the last, like a month ago today. Think about what you were doing a month ago today and think like, wow, like today would be the last day I would be writing in the journal and that's all I would be doing and I would be hanging out with my friends. Just really like put that into perspective. That's like all he did, all he did for a month. Right after shooting ended, he wrote in the last page of the journal, he said, bye bye. And you know, that, that could obviously be like, oh, bye Joker. And 
it ended up being like by acting career and then you know a couple months later like he died so a lot of people think that's like a really eerie coincidence his father said that he was always dedicated to his roles of course but no one had ever seen him go nearly as far for a role than he did when he played the Joker. Which in his defense, it's a very iconic role. Like, you know, you got a lot of eyes on you. Y you know, people's expectations are very high. There's a lot of pressure. You want to do a good job. In his last interview before he passed away, Heath Ledger said that the Joker was the best thing that he ever did. And then in January of 2008, he was found dead in his hotel room due to an accidental prescription overdose. And then the movie, The Dark Knight, was released in July of that year. It's really sad that he didn't get to see the final product and didn't get to see, you know, the result of all of his hard work. But the following year, they gave him an Oscar for the role. Are you sweet talking me? Ah, ah, ah. What do we have here? By erasing my mind. Ah, 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 ah. 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 I am not someone who is love. Yeah. State of mind. Now, Jared Leto's portrayal of the Joker is a very controversial topic. Like, people really didn't vibe with the whole gangster Joker thing in Suicide Squad. <laughs> He's so intense. In fact, most people didn't vibe with the whole Suicide Squad movie. I loved it. I think I saw, I believe I saw it seven times in the theater when it came out and I dressed up and every time I went, I took a picture with a cardboard cutout of the Joker. Oh, I was such a nerd. wild, wild times. I was in middle school. And then there's one picture where I like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna act like the movie made me cry. And like, I did tear up a little, of course, but like, I obviously didn't look like this. I remember I like smeared my makeup. I was like, oh, I cried so much. Girl, like, come on, come on now. So here's where the curse comes in with Leto. Jared Leto does method acting, kind of like Heath Ledger did. And that's where you kind of like live as the character. And that seems to be what people do when they approach the role of the Joker. He gave his castmates some disgusting gifts. Like he mailed Margot Robbie a dead mouse. He sent Will Smith a pack of bullets, and he sent the rest of the cast dead pigs. Cast members said they never really met Leto, only the Joker. While researching the role, he watched a lot of those like extreme gore, extreme violence types of videos, which really got him into like the mental space to play the Joker. It really took him there, like into like a dark place. I don't know if you've seen those videos, but after you, you know, you're not all like rainbows and butterflies, that's for sure. He said that he didn't like what it was doing to him, so he stopped. He said that he had done a lot of dark films, but none of them had impacted him like this did. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about the most recent Joker, Joaquin Phoenix. He said that pursuing the Joker terrified him. The director of the film said that sometimes Joaquin would just get up and leave during the middle of a scene because he just wasn't feeling right. Like he felt like something was really, really wrong with him. When he was preparing for the Role, he watched a lot of videos of people that suffered from pathological laughter, which is something that his character suffered from in the film. He also lost 20 pounds for the part, which can really like mess you up. Like if you gain or lose an extreme amount of weight, it, it, it like impacts you mentally if you do it in a very short amount of time. He had said, and you know, like I'm sure a lot of these interviews, like they kind of ask the actors to like say some creepy stuff to like, cause this curse is like very well known. People know about it. 
Like when people find out someone's gonna play the Joker, they're like, oh, are you ready? Like, it's really gonna mess you up. You might never go back to normal. When they were interviewing him about the role, he mentioned that he really felt like he was starting to go mad. He said, I don't know how it changes you, but it just does. But he didn't have any really crazy stories or nightmares while playing this part. As we all know, the sequel is coming out very soon. So we'll see what happens then. We'll see if something happens to him then. If you like my content, be sure to interact. I'm like a newer growing channel. So like, you know, it would mean a lot just to show your support in liking or commenting or sharing or subscribing. Definitely subscribing. You should definitely do that. And remember, if you subscribe, I will send you a picture of my teeth. Just DM me on Instagram. Bye.